combination of beetroot, walnuts, goat's cheese, onions that have been very slowly cooked until they're soft, slightly sweet, almost caramelized, and a really good quality balsamic vinegar is a fantastic combination. And it makes what I think is one of the best tarts in the world. And it's certainly one of the easiest and the quickest. And you can make it in about 30 minutes or so. If you're buying the pastry, go for an all butter puff pastry. It makes such a difference to the tart. With the cheaper puff pastries, which are made with vegetable oils, you often get a very claggy taste, sometimes an aftertaste. And I, I sometimes find that the pastry almost sticks to the roof of my mouth and it's really not pleasant. But a good all butter puff pastry, although it's slightly more expensive, is really worth it because you get that beautiful melt in the mouth flavor, that lovely taste of the butter that goes so well with the rest of the ingredients for the tart. I've rolled out some puff pastry thinly to a large rectangle, almost to the size of a baking tray, and I've popped the pastry on a sheet of greaseproof paper, partly to stop it sticking when it bakes, but mainly as a protective layer so that the base of the pastry isn't going to go too dark or burnt. With a very sharp knife, I've made an incision about a centimetre away from each edge, just going a little way into the pastry, but not right to the base. And that's going to form a border. So as the tart bakes, that border is just going to rise up a lot more around the edge than it does in the middle where the filling will be. And it will give you a pastry lip that just keeps everything in place. It's kind of like a very long, wide, but shallow volivant. You don't have to do that at all. You can just do what I'm going to do now and put all the ingredients straight on the flat puff pastry without any cuts whatsoever. But I do like getting that little puff pastry lip. I boil the beetroot in the skins just until they go slightly soft, but they've still got some texture and some bite. And I'm just going to chop these into chunks. You can slice them, you can chop them any way you like. For the onions, I've just cooked them very slowly in a pan with some butter, some oil, some salt, and some fresh thyme for about 40 minutes or so until they go soft and slightly sweet. You can take them a lot further and caramelize them if you want as well, and that makes a fantastic tart. What I often do is make up a large batch of onions, maybe at a weekend or so, and just keep them with a bit of oil in an airtight jar in the fridge, and they will keep happily for several weeks and then you can just tuck into them as and when so it's an instant ingredient that's ready to go. If you don't want to use cooked onions or cook them at all you can just use red onions just slice them thinly and just pop them on top of the tart and they will cook down beautifully. You can also use beetroot that's been vacuum packed and that works really well here just don't go for a beetroot that's got the vinegar in it because usually it's a malt vinegar and it just murders the flavor of the beetroot and it will ruin the tart. So just check if you can use vac pack that it's got nothing else added to it whatsoever. But I often will use that as a standby because it's just very, very quick. I've gone for a mild goat cheese, which I love eating. And when it cooks, it takes on an even nicer flavor. But you can just use any cheese that you've got. And if you've got cheese in the packet that has gone slightly dry, just chop or grate it and use that instead. But at other times, I will use gorgonzola or stilton. Sometimes I'll use a cheddar. And at other times, I'll just use little dollops of mascarpone or some cream cheese, and it works just as well. I've got a really good quality balsamic vinegar. It's rich, it's sticky, it's slightly thick, almost syrupy, and it really is worth going for a great quality balsamic vinegar. I've chopped the beetroot up and I'm just gonna add a splash of the vinegar and just give it a stir together. And I just love how thick and syrupy this vinegar is. You don't wanna drown the beetroot, just enough to coat them. And then it's just now ready to assemble the tart. I'm going to start with the onions. So I'm just 
gonna scatter these over the center. I don't really want the ingredients to go over where the cuts are. If a few of them do escape, it's not really the end of the world. And don't be too fussy about getting it absolutely perfectly even. You just want it fairly even. As always, the smell of cooked onions is just fantastic. There we go, that's fine. Then I'm just going to take the beetroot and just scatter those on top. Some of the juice as well, which is wonderful. The way that the beetroot juice mingles with the balsamic vinegar is wonderful. <laughs> Almost like blood stains, but you know, that's maybe not the most attractive description. I'm just going to scatter over the nuts. You don't want too many nuts, just probably about a tablespoon or so. If you have too many, it just becomes too crunchy. But just the odd little burst of crunch in the tart is just wonderful. I'll try and get it on the pastry. And for the goat cheese, I'm just gonna tear this up with my hands and just dot it over randomly. And that is gonna melt beautifully and almost enrobe some of the pieces of the beetroot that it's lying on and it's just gonna give you a fantastic flavor. It's a beautifully soft goat's cheese. I've just given it a good grinding of black pepper and now it's ready to bake in the oven at 190 centigrade with the fan on for about 20 to 25 minutes just until the pastry around the edge is nicely risen is a beautiful golden brown and you have lovely flecks of bubbling cheese all over the surface if you don't have a fan oven just take the oven to about 200 to maybe 210 centigrade And I would finish this off with a light drizzle of balsamic vinegar, a generous sprinkling of chopped chives, and if you have them, just a sprinkling of the chive flowers, which add a beautiful allium burst in your mouth. And all I would do is serve this very simply with a crisp green salad with a nice sharp vinaigrette and some good bread and